I title today's conversation mind map, Enter into the Spirit of It. Now, we spoke on Sunday of how awareness goes into form. Everything is a creative initiative, and thus, awareness is always going into some shape or form through mind. And so this world is a living, creative expression, an act of the unseen power. And spirit animates it, be it in relationships, arts, writing a book, whatever. We actually give life by entering into the spirit of it. Spirit flows through the subconsciously accepted vision, your vision, which is reflected as those who experience your creative expression, performance, art. And they too appear to be inspired by the spirit of it. Now, this is articulated really well in one of the essays by Thomas Trord, the one titled Entering into the Spirit. And that's what I'd like to discuss today, and I trust you'll find this to be very insightful. He says, To enter into the spirit of anything, then, is to make yourself one in thought with the creative principle that is at the center of it. And therefore, why not go into the center of all things at once and enter into the spirit of life? Do you ask where to find it? In yourself. And in proportion, as you find it there, you will find it everywhere else. Look at life as the one thing that is. Whether in you or around you, try to realize the liveliness of it, and then seek to enter into the spirit of it by affirming it to be the whole of what you are. Affirm this continually in your thoughts, and by degrees the affirmation will grow into a real life force within you, so that it will become a second nature to you, and you will find it impossible and unnatural to think it any other way. And the nearer you approach this point, the greater you will find your control over. So I like how he says, and in the proportion as you find it in there, you will find it everywhere else. So about a month ago, I had a desire to show up to look for an old book from William Walker Atkinson, and I found one a 1932 print of one of his books, which he wrote under a pen name, Yogi Ramacharaka, called Hatha Yoga. He had once traveled to India to learn from the yogis. Now, the year of the book was also very significant to me. 1932 was the year my grandmother was born, and we were very close growing up. It also happened to be the year... William Walker Atkinson died, 1932, the year of the book. And my grandmother had passed away in 2020. So I felt the desire to find one of his books and fulfilled it. And then when the book arrived, I felt it. I felt the spirit of it. Like with any work of art, spirit is experienced through it. When the book arrived, I opened it, I felt it. It was interesting to look at the pages, faded and smelling like an old library a few paragraphs underlined in pen, perhaps from the previous owner or one of the few. And I had a lot of inspiration that day by the spirit of it. That was William Walker Atkinson's intention. And I could tell, which I then expressed in a video that I released last week discussing William Walker Atkinson's work, although from a different book, read on my laptop, as I have the complete reader digital format. What's amazing is that you can tell that he got into the spirit of it when he wrote it. Anyone can experience this in a work of art, and I consider his writings a work of art. Spirit flows through your subconscious mind and into your creation. It projects out and takes on a form creatively expressed as art and is animated accordingly as spirit flows through it. And it animates you. And it animates everything. In theater, for example, the performers, by the intention of a harmonious performance and the contents of the subconscious, style, etc., 
all their experiences. As they enter the state, all experience the spirit of it, as far as the senses perceive. It is experienced as spirit outpouring as the experience of the performers into the audience. As the saying goes, the audience is moved by the performance. Now, to accomplish this, if you're a performer, see yourself as the cause of all phenomena in your experience. And by cause, I mean selecting the state and allowing spirit to animate it for you. That's all. Everything is done for you. And as you do this, body seems to move automatically to reflect that state. Spirit seems to move the audience. The audience surrenders to the performance as they desire to. The desire is a match. They seek to be moved, and they are moved by your performance. Now, the audience, perhaps they in the beginning, seemed to have displayed resistance. More accurately put, it only seemed to appear that way to the performer. However, the performer is to acknowledge that the audience is there for the performance to be moved and thus are allowing themselves to enter into the spirit of it. So then the performer doesn't react to any untrue interpretation what is seeming to be displayed by the audience as resistance to enter into the spirit of it and then it reflects as the audience entered into the spirit of it. For example, observe the 1985 Live Aid performance of Queen. Freddie Mercury enters into the spirit of it. The spirit moves him like a marionette. And further, it facilitates as the spirit enters into the audience. They allow it. They surrendered into the spirit of it. And what you have then is an iconic performance. So as the performer, it is your responsibility to enter into the spirit of it. The world then appears to transform, to reflect the state, all done for you by spirit. Now, you don't have to be Freddie Mercury to do this. You already are a star. The world plays all the roles in your movie. You are a star wherever you go. And this is your movie. Spirit flows through you, animating you to play the role as the environment also plays the role. Mutual harmony and benefit. So you can do this in the moment of your performance. We surrender into the spirit of it by intention. And you feel yourself releasing control, allowing the spirit of it to take care of everything for you. And how does it feel when it's happening? Well, William Walker Atkinson actually articulated this really well in one of his books. He called it the unseen hand. Now, let's explore some of my notes here. And this can serve as your guide during any form of creative expression, arts, projects, relating with others. I consider, again, everything is a creative expression. Use your imagination. You direct all the power through your mind. He says, The consciousness of the hand, when it was first felt, always there, now as the hand of a father, now as the hand of a mother, a lover, a brother, always guiding, always leading, a mystery. I have felt the unseen hand have been guided by it. Now, for me, I experienced this before, during, and after the performance. I experienced the unseen hand as the unseen voice before and after, providing clear instructions. It can also happen during the performance. Primarily, what I notice is mind goes clear during the performance, and I release into the flow. The unseen hand, or we could say unseen body, takes over. During, you are aware and you observe if there is any resistance and release further into the spirit of it. So if you're a performer, enter into the spirit of it by mentally releasing doubt, worry, judgment, trying to be someone. Body and world follows accordingly. It can help to yield a little bit and then a little bit more into the invisible hand. Acknowledge that the invisible hand seeks to move you and your audience. From there, everything happens naturally and automatically. 
as he says, it would take my unwilling fingers within its own and lead me on, and lead me on. He states, finding that I could not get rid of this unseen helper, realizing that it was intent upon guiding me in spite of my repeated assertions that I was able to take care of myself, that I was big enough to walk alone. I began to study the something that was so determined to take an active part in the affairs of my life. I started to become acquainted with it. So this is an exploration of your inner world, before, during, and after the performance, as mentioned. Through listening to yourself and trusting yourself, the unseen hand makes its presence felt. So I find, and have observed the results of it. You will see it in the performance or creative initiative, project, or whatever. You'll also find that this is a transformational process. And as a result of the transformation that occurs, you'll find it easier to tune out all the unrelated in everyday waking life and the unseen hand seems to play a larger role. For me, it's a voice. I even at times wake up in the middle of the night receiving insights and perspectives to the different aspects of my life and purpose. You always have a friend, a teacher, a mentor in the unseen hand, which gives you everything you need to consciously do, if any. And the rest is done for you by the unseen hand. All roles are played by the unseen hand. He says, I found that it has always been with me, more or less, but that I had not before recognized its presence. This is true for me. Ever since I was a child, life seems like a relationship building with the unseen hand. And you can call it the unseen body or voice. Call it the unseen if you'd like. It's formless. And it is giving form through your imagination. He says, When I at length threw off the last fetter that had bound me, when I threw back my shoulders and drew my first free breath, when I shouted aloud with joy at my freedom and strength, when I realized the power that was within me, and at my command, when I started out to accomplish that which my awakened mind told me was possible of attainment, when I started to do these things all by myself, then I felt for the first time the firm clasp of the unseen hand. And I always say, your vision is what you're destined to become. And so we release unnecessary programming identification and we can look at it from the perspective of surrendering into the unseen hand. And the unseen hand takes care of everything. It animates the entire existence. You, body seems to move automatically. The audience, audience seems to move automatically. All a reflection, complete surrender. Any resistance, well... To the degree that you have surrendered to the unseen hand, there is no resistance. And if there's resistance, as I mentioned earlier, mentally release it. Release into the unseen hand. He says, Now giving a gentle urge toward people, things, and conditions, now giving me a gentle, firm pressure to reassure me of its presence when I doubt it, now allowing me to rest my weight upon it when I feel tired, always there. I have learned to love this hand, and the owner of the hand seems to feel and return this love. And now and then, by a sympathetic little clasp, lets me know that I am understood. I have never seen the face of the owner of this hand. I have never seen its form, if form it has. Shall I ever know the owner of this hand? Shall I ever see its face? Shall I ever understand the mystery of its existence? I know not. But faith whispers in my ear, Wait! All is well. When the pupil is ready, the master appears. When your eyes have a clear vision and can bear the sight, then shall you see the face of the owner of the hand. You have entered the path and there is no turning back. Go on. Go on in faith, courage, and confidence. Why should you doubt? Have you not felt the pressure of the hand? The unseen hand is waiting to clasp yours. Give it welcome. Give it welcome. So isn't that reassuring? We enter into the spirit of it. 
We simply accept that's the way it is. Our vision is reality, and then everything moves. Part of it includes acknowledging that everything is animated by spirit in the entire experience. All people, environment, the entire performance, accepting that. It takes care of everything for you. So let's go back to the beginning here. Thomas George said, To enter into the spirit of anything, then is to make yourself one in thought with the creative principle that is at the center of it. And therefore, why not go to the center of all things at once and enter into the spirit of life? Do you ask where to find it? In yourself. And in proportion as you find it there, you will find it everywhere else. So listen to yourself and trust yourself. Enter the spirit of it, whatever it is that you're doing. Creative endeavor, artistic expression, performance. Everything else happens. He says, look at life as one big thing, that is. Whether in you or around you, try to realize the livingness of it. And then seek to enter into the spirit of it by affirming it to be the whole of what you are. Affirm this continually in your thoughts. And by degrees, the affirmation will grow into a real living force within you so that it will become a second nature to you. And you will find it impossible and unnatural to think in any other way. And the nearer you approach this point, the greater you will find your control over. Remember, spirit animates your art, book, performance, or whatever for you. You simply select how you'd like it to be. It animates everything and plays out that way. Again, this is not only true for performing artists, but athletes, entrepreneurs, relationships, all areas of life. Allow the animation of it, and you'll see it more so. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You can say, I enter the spirit of it by acknowledging that I was always in the spirit of it, and thus wherever my attention goes, I give life and animate everything to reflect how I desire it to be. And it reflects accordingly as the outer aspects of my life as far as my senses perceive. Operating from my vision as spirit reflects in my creative expression, invention, innovation, and all areas of my life. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.